Hey peeps, greetings from San Francisco. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip, And we're the Kitchen Queers. Hey, thanks for coming to join us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. I see we've already got some people in the chat room. So let's welcome Lisa D from Lisa D's Delights. Great to see you, Lisa D. Thank you for being here. We just watched her channel earlier and she just made a really nice looking corned beef hash in her Ooh, Instapod. Yeah. That looked really good, Lisa D. So thanks for being here this afternoon. It's great to see you. And Rob from Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY channel. Love his show. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. And Suburban Barbecue is in the house. Woo, woo, woo. Thanks, Suburban Barbecue. He's commenting on our shirts. He says he likes our shirts. We like our shirts, too. Thank you so much. Okay, and Tom's Food Factory is here. Hello, Tom. Great to see you. And Bobby Catton is in the house. Great to see you, too. And Lisa D., if you missed earlier, we said hello to you, too. And we were bragging to all the other guests about how wonderful your Instapot recipe is for corned beef hash. That looked really delicious. So great job. Okay, so, oh, awesome to see all of our lovely friends here. Sunset in the house. Hey, Sunset, great to see you. Janine Johnson has joined us. Thanks, Janine, for being here. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So what, what the stream quality that we see on our monitor right now looks terrible. So let us know what you think about the stream quality because we've been having issues with this for the last few weeks. We went for two years doing live streams and never had any trouble getting a clear outcome. And for the last... Uh, three or four weeks, it's been really hit or miss, and, and a couple of times it was so bad you couldn't even see what we were doing at all. So let us know in the comments if you're able to see and hear everything okay, because this doesn't look as clear as we'd like it, but it's actually better than some of the video that we've seen. So if we switch over to our live streaming thing, see how clear we look? This is how clear we look when we get all the way to the other end. So... Hopefully that'll clear up as we go along, but that looks pretty good. So it's coming and going. So I see sent one 1000 have joined us in the chat room. Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Homeowner is commenting that our noon time, there was a lot less traffic on the internet. Oh, and that? that may have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that, one of the things about the new time was, yes, it was it's a lot less busy. And we actually, I'm a huge fan of daytime television. And so that's why we originally started out in the middle of the day, because uh, we wanted to be part of the daytime television crowd. And I actually kind of missed that. There was a lot of our friends that uh, aren't able to come this late in the afternoon. So, But what we have noticed is since we've been on at 4 o'clock instead of noon, our watch time has tripled. So... There you have it. You know, we get a lot more viewers. It's just hard to get a better feed. We've done system checks and speed tests on our internet, and we actually have a very efficient system. Uh, so we're still perplexed why sometimes our streams aren't as clear as they could be. We thought it was uh, an exclusive problem to using StreamYard since that was new to us. Some of our streams through StreamYard were clear and some weren't but we're also having similar experiences on YouTube the past three or four weeks. So we'll do the best we can to muddle through even if the picture isn't crystal clear. So thank you for hanging in with us. Uh, someone says, do both. That, that's not actually possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, not simultaneously. Not simultaneously. You know, we need two different channels to do that. So anyway, um, we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Hopefully uh, we'll see if things Sometimes things get clearer as we go along. We'll just keep doing the best that we can. But that, that looks pretty wonky. You know, it's almost as bad as the other night when I was trying to show that cool cocktail shaker, which we've got right here, the brewmate that uh, Mr. Homeowner and his lovely wife, Bobby Joe, sent to us. We actually just used this earlier to make these lovely margaritas. And we will tell you more about these cocktails as this broadcast unfolds. We're going to have a period today where we're going to have a break while the uh, pasta is cooking. And then Philip's going to show us how to make some garlic French bread really easily. And then by then we'll be ready for round two of cocktails. And I'll show you how we made these drinks today. Philip's cocktail is a blood orange margarita. And just really quickly, what we did was we replaced, it's a standard uh, margarita recipe and we replaced half of the lime juice with blood orange juice that we squeezed ourselves. It's a lovely Put a deep mauve color. I really super like it. I think it looks really, really good. It's very tasty. It's a little sweeter than a regular margarita. More orange flavor because the orange juice, but it's yummy. And Texas Food Fan has joined us in the house. Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. And Ski Girly's here. Woot, woot. Ski Girly, we got our roommate. We got a roommate on today, Ski Girly, right here. We have, ever since we got this, 
we have used it every single night to make drinks. And I have two favorite things about it. Besides, well, I guess three. One is it's gorgeous. I love this finish. So does Philip. It does not leak at all. And it does not get cold on the exterior. So, yeah, I'm always saying in our videos, you know, shake the shaker until it gets cold and frosty on the outside. Well, I'm going to have to change my pitch because this does not get cold on the outside. And I really like that because my hands are very sensitive to temperature. So having the shaker not be cold on the exterior makes it easier to shake things for longer. So that's a gift we have been using every single night since we got it. So let me make sure we said hi to everyone. For those of you who aren't clear on what we're doing today, we are going to be using the enameled cast iron soup pot. Some people call it a stock pot. And we're going to make a dinner all in this one pot. Every single thing is going to go in this pot, cook for a while, and ba-boom, dinner will be done. So today we're doing sausage pasta one pot dinner. And we already have all of our ingredients prepped. Let me go over the ingredients really quickly with you. Oh, hey, Michelle's Cozy Home is in the house. Michelle, nice to see you. Thank you so much for being here this evening. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Okay, so I did I say hi to Bobby Catton? I think I did. I just want to make sure I say hi to everyone. Tom's Food Factory is in the house. Texas Food Fan's in the house. Yay, we've got lots of our lovely friends here. So thank you so much for being here. We'll do our best to carry on the... Broadcast quality we have tonight seems a little wonky again. So we'll just do the best we can. Uh, can you guys hear us okay? Is the audio okay? Uh, it sometimes looks like there's rain on the lens. Yeah, there. the picture quality is a little bit uh, a little bit iffy. <laughs> but sometimes the if we, uh, hold still. if we hold really, really still, maybe you won't notice. Kinda, but not really. <laughs> well, we're just going to go with it. You have to work with what you have. Okay. So what we're going to do, let me run the ingredients for the one pot sausage pasta. The uh, first ingredient is, uh, and just so you know, all the ingredients are listed in the description below where you're watching this live stream right now. So you can just scroll down and you can copy and paste those into your digital recipe book. The ingredients for the cocktails that we're drinking are also listed below in the description. But I'm gonna run the ingredients by you really fast. The first one is one pound of breakfast sausage. And we've got Jimmy Dean's hot breakfast sausage that we're gonna to use today. It's our favorite flavor. So yeah, this video quality is really wonky. Anyway, so in addition to one pound of breakfast sausage, we have a medium onion that we diced. And for our seasonings, we have two teaspoons of dried oregano, one eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a half a teaspoon each of garlic powder, kosher salt, and ground black pepper. We also have four cups of vegetable broth. You can use chicken broth or beef broth or whatever kind of broth that you have available to you. We actually uh, made this by using that better than bouillon product that comes in a jar and it's sort of a paste of bouillon. And we just mixed uh, one teaspoon per cup of water and we did four cups of water. So that was four teaspoons and just dissolved it in hot water. And that worked really, really easily to make very fresh and nice tasting stock. We're also going to use a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and tomato puree. So the work here is already done for you. All we have to do is pour the can into the pot. Mm, and on. we're also going to use two tablespoons of tomato paste. That's going to add a lot of flavor to our pasta dish. And we're also going to be using later, we'll have everyone vote. Yeah. We have two different types of pasta. Philip's holding cavatappi. I've got fusilli. Either one of these will work. When uh, we made it and took the picture for the uh, thumbnail, that was Rotini. So we didn't we couldn't find the same brand of Rotini that we used. Rotini and Fusilli are actually really, really similar, at least this version of Yeah, this is uh, basically Fusilli. Rotini. This is basically Rotini. There's other kinds of Fusilli that look more like uh, springs. Yeah, they look Fine. more like uh, cavatappi, but without the grooves in the tubes of the pasta. So we're going to let you guys decide a little later whether you want fusilli or cavatappi when we get to the point to add the pasta to the dish. We'll ask you all about that. So in so addition to that, it. yeah, think about what kind of pasta you'd like to see go in this dish. Uh, we also are going to add, once the whole thing is cooked, in order to add a creamy element, we're going to do two things. We're going to add a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, and we're also going to add a quarter cup 
of cream cheese. Now, I know some of our friends don't like cream cheese. So if you don't like cream cheese, use mascarpone instead. That works just fine. In fact, that's what the original recipe called for. We didn't have mascarpone, so we're using cream cheese because that's what we had in the refrigerator. So those are the ingredients. And once again, if you missed anything I said, they're all located down below uh, in the description where you're watching this video. So let me check in really kid, quick with everyone I see in the kitchen with Karen who's here. Hey, Karen, great to see you. That uh, Japanese pizza dish you made on your live feed last week looked really delicious. That was really cool. And Fat Kids Barbecue is in the house. Hey, Fat Kids Barbecue, nice to see you. He just did uh, several new videos. I saw some posts on his Instagram about if he's doing some barbecuing actually outside. Yeah. It was nice enough where he is that he could go outside. Cool. So that was super cool to see that he's able to get out and use the outdoor grill. So let me make sure. I think we said hello to everyone. Okay, so let's see. We're still experiencing some transmission issues. We're just going to keep on keeping We're on. Gonna work it. We're going to work it no matter what happens. You know, the, the picture quality goes up and down. I don't know how to explain it. We've tried everything we can on our end to make it better. And uh, it seems like it's hit and miss. Earlier when we did a test, it was crystal clear. And last week, you know, if you were watching our uh, St. Patrick's Day cocktail show, uh, it was pretty clear the whole time. In fact, Rob from Mr. Homeowner Channel commented that it was clear as vodka, which <laughs> sounded really good to us. We're going to use that phrase again and again and again. Who wants murky vodka? I know. Recipes with Risa is in the house. Hey, Risa, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, let's get this show on the road. <laughs> Philip is going to cut open the end of the sausage. Okay, I like this way. Okay, will you do it whatever way you want? Cut we need to turn the there. burner on, too. Okay. To... Right about there. Okay, so we've turned the burner on to medium-low. We're using an enameled cast-iron stock pot that holds up to six quarts for this project. Uh, you can use any kind of a pot you've got available. We like this one because it holds lots of stuff. And this is going to be a one-pot dish, so we need a pot that's big enough to hold everything. Because once we pour all the, the tomato sauce and the other ingredients and put the pasta in, this pot doesn't get full to the top, but it does get a little on the full side. So you need at least a six-quart to be able to make this happen. So let's check and see uh, what's happening over here in the chat room. <clears throat> How is it looking to you guys on your end? Are you guys having... A lot of uh, problems with the picture looking fuzzy or blurry or otherwise pixelated. Uh, let us know. We may not be able to do anything about it, but we appreciate the feedback because not everything looks the same to everyone during the live stream. Some people experience things are clear and some people not so much. So some of it may have to do with our internet connection. Uh, Karen says her, hers is a bit fuzzy, uh, but she can see us. So okay. that's kind of what we're experiencing too. It looks a little pixelated around the edges, but you can see what we're doing. So back to the food, as you can see in the pan, Philip has dumped in the pound of breakfast sausage and now he's chopping it all up. And we're gonna cook this for oh, five or six minutes. More like mooshing. Yeah, chopping. it's smooshing, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna cook this for five or six minutes and start to get a brown going on. And then we're going to add the onions. So for now, we just need to wait for that to get a little bit hotter. Okay. Uh, let's see. Fat Kid says it's fuzzy, but it comes and goes. That's what we've been seeing, too. And Lisa D says she can see us. Uh, and Risa says she can see our fabulous shirts. Well, thank you for that lovely compliment, Risa. We appreciate that. We actually have quite a collection of shirts now, and the closet is full. So we're going to have to start <laughs> rotating shirts because there isn't anywhere to hang any more clothes until we get a bigger house, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later. Is it a cooking show or a fashion show? It's a drinking show. Hey, hello. hello. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. We'll tell you how to make these cocktails a little bit later in this episode. Looking at the light through my uh, arms. Mm -hmm. Yes, those dehydrated. For what you're wondering, these are dehydrated citrus slices. In fact, Philip has a blood orange slice mm -hmm. in his. Um, they look like stained glass. And that's what I was just going to say. It looks like stained glass. So, hey, Jeff from Wine and Dine with Jeff is here. Great to see you, Jeff. He just had a new dish with this. Korean black bean sauce and his new video from today. That looked supremely delicious. Do you need some brownie going on here? Uh, okay, good. Oh, let's see. Fat Kid said he's having a Tito soda and cranberry. Ooh. Uh, Michelle's commenting that things are a little fuzzy on her end. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, Michelle, because it's we really wish we could fix this. 
it's hit or miss, but you know, like I said, we did a test earlier and it was crystal clear. And now this afternoon, it's definitely not crystal clear. This uh, it makes it a little hard to watch. When we look over here on our others, is this, see how clear that, that's how clear we should look when we see it on the other thing. See how clear that is? And then we go over here and it's kind of wonky. So we'll do the best we can to carry on and show you how to put this dinner together because this is actually really delicious <laughs> and it's not hard to do. And for our family, we usually feed three or four adults in our house. And this last, we had enough to have dinner off of it five different nights. Now you may say, oh, well, you guys must have been sick of that pasta. Well, over a yeah. week, we skipped a couple nights and had something else and then came back to this. And I think I gnashed on it for lunch one time. But this is really delicious and it's very easy to do. It's like spaghetti. I can have spaghetti every night of the week. I'm yeah, I can have pasta all the time. <laughs> we actually really don't eat pasta nearly as much as we used to because we're trying to lower our carb intake, which, you know, at times is more and less successful, as some of you know, that can be hard to do. Uh, so when we do have pasta, we want to have something that's really yummy and super comforting. And this dish is definitely going to fit that bill. So let me check in with the chat. I see everyone's playing nicely over here. We really appreciate that. Yeah, Risa says she could eat pasta every day. I think we used to eat pasta every day. <laughs> so anyway, let's see. I need another sip of this cocktail. I'm drinking a pink margarita. Philip's drinking a blood orange margarita. Mmm. Mmm. And not to worry, peeps, we will tell you how to make these drinks before this program ends. Okay, so let's see. Over here, oh my gosh, I wish we were as clear as that was. Uh, let's see, Sunset is asking, what are we growing in our garden? And the answer to that is, uh, right now we have curly leaf parsley, sage, yep. chives, yep. oregano, yep. Uh, I think that's it. We planted rosemary and it started coming up, but the other herbs overtook it and ground it out. Yeah, the other herbs got bigger faster than the rosemary and they sort of overtook it. So we're, we're exactly going to start right. another batch of this well, spring. Yeah, we actually, what we did was, was in, we, like two weeks? Yeah, we took the, uh, the large container that we had from last year and put it in the new greenhouse that we assembled. You may have seen that video from about six weeks ago. And it, because it's warm in the greenhouse, it, the herbs started to look like it was spring again, and they actually look really good considering yeah. it was, you know, winter. Uh, so keeping things warmer definitely helped make them overwinter in a way that normally they just poop out and then we have to start all over again. We are going to start all over again shortly, and we'll be having a video about how we plant our herb seeds and what we do to make them grow successfully. So as you can see, even with the fuzzy picture, the meat is starting to get browned. And it's going to be time to add the onion. And this is a yellow onion that we just diced. It's just a medium dice. You can use a yellow onion. You can use a white onion. You can use a red onion. You can use whatever kind of onion appeals to you. It's, just, it's not specific that it has to be this. We used a yellow onion because that's what we had. So I'm going to pour that in there. Whoa! And can you get the rest yeah, of that out of there for me? There we go. Okay, so the onion's going in. And now Philip's going to continue to brown sausage while also cooking the onion. We want the onions to get just slightly translucent before we move on to the next step. So let me check in with the chat. Uh, oh, Janine says her audio and visual is very clear. I see Yester, hit, uh, Yester Kitchen joined us in the house. Yay! Hey, Jill, Hi, great Jill. to see you. Thank wow. you so much for being here this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to see her come across our screen. And Lisa D says she loves onions. We agree. Oh, yeah. We make all mm, kinds of different things with onions. I love onions. Yeah, we use onions, onions all the time. La, la, la. And let's see. I want to make sure I said hi to everyone. I think I did. Sometimes I watch the live streams after we're done to you know, critique myself on how we can be better and bring you a better program every week when we come back to you. And it's always fun to be able to read the chat and catch up on a lot of the messages that went by really fast while the live stream was unfolding. So that's always fun. Just know that if I miss seeing you in the chat, because sometimes, like I say, it goes by really fast, I will check the chat later and I do read all the comments and I tell them all that this guy over here. We do that after we're done with the live stream. We'll make another drink and we'll go <laughs> through all the comments. So thank you all for participating in the chat. We really appreciate that. The after show. The after show. Hey, a little fish in the kitchen has joined us. Marcel, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. 
It's great to have you here in the kitchen with us today. So let's see, just FYI here in San Francisco, it's 54 degrees. It's a little bit breezy at 15 miles an hour. It's cloudy and overcast outside. It's supposed to rain and soon. Yeah, at the forecast We've been said, waiting. Yeah, the forecast said rain starting at 4 p.m. It's now 4.19 and it's not raining. So we'll see what happens. If rain starts while we're here on the live stream, we'll let you know about it. So as you can see, the meat is starting to brown nicely and the onions are starting to soften up a bit. We're gonna let this go for probably four to six more minutes before we move on to the next step. And just so you know, once we get this to the point that it's going to simmer for a few minutes, Philip on the back counter has already made a loaf of, what kind of bread is that? Well, it's here. Oh, here. We, show. Show. we made bread from, we made bread from a tube, not from scratch. Sorry. It's French bread. It's French bread. Pillsbury French bread in a tube. Okay. It's great. So you just took that out. 20 minutes at 350. Popped it on a pan, yeah. and we baked it in the June oven. So for those of you, I know that Rob from Mr. Homeowner Channel is always asking about our June oven. Philip used the June oven to bake the French bread today. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to cook the... Yeah. Oh, Sundays with Heart is in the house. Hey, Leanne, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. So now Philip's got some stirring to do. These uh, onions are starting to... Soften up a little bit. Little transitions happening here. And hey, baking diva in the house. Oh, yay! Diva. Yeah. Awesome. Great to see you, Dolores. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. We hope everything's well at your house. I'm not, is she still, are, Dolores, are you still under snow at your house? You know, she's all the way on the northeast coast of the United States. And so it was very, very, very snowy. I saw Instagram from her. And there was like six feet of snow in her front yard. So uh, let's see. Uh, Sundays with heart in the house. Great to see you, Leanne. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, I see everyone's playing nicely in the chat. Uh, I know. I agree. Fat Kid says, I love all these channels. All of our favorite channels are so often in the chat, and that makes it so much fun. Uh, I really have a good time going through and checking out all of our colleagues and friends' channels to see what you guys have been cooking, which is a huge motivator to us to try new things all the time. So we really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. It's okay. Uh, Dolores says uh, the snow is finally starting to melt. All right. So maybe she'll be able to see her backyard and her garden in the not too distant future. And I think she has a swimming. Baking Diva, don't you have a swimming pool in your backyard? Like you is. I thought I saw an Instagram and of her with her grandkids in the swimming pool one time. So I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you do with the swimming pool when it snows? Cover it. Cover it up with Rain. a tarp or something. I have no idea what you do with a, a swimming pool in the wintertime. But we're going to have to learn because I'm trying to talk this guy into move to a house with a pool. When I was a kid, we had a doughboy. A flip and fill was three feet deep and like maybe 15 feet wide. That's a pretty decent sized pool. But, you know, it stood up. It didn't go down the ground. But it was great. And in San Jose, it was perfect. That's still got a little way to go. Almost it? there. We're Almost there. Now we're getting there. We're going to add the next thing that we're going to add are the seasonings once the onions are a Ooh. little bit more translucent. Lucent. Oh, okay. They can give us this. That was her son's pool. And they have a cover oh, that okay. they pull okay. over it in the winter. Yeah. That's okay. okay. That's what I was curious about yeah. because I know also. On Mr. Homeowner Channel, Rob has a big swimming pool in his backyard, and they had a lot of snow where they were, too, because they're also on the East Coast. And I couldn't figure out, like, how do you, you know, your pool freezes like a solid block? It seems to me like that would be Ice skating! Be a Hello! Problem, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> when I was in Boston, the Charles River would freeze, and we would go ice skating on the river, although it was kind of bumpy. Well, Sundays with Hart said that they have a hot tub, and it's not a problem when it snows. It's Ooh. perfect in the winter, actually, and then they just turn the temperature down in the summer and use it as a plunge pool. That yeah. sounds fine. We, <laughs> if we can't have a swimming pool, I don't need a big one. Just a martini-sized pool would be fine. And if it's a hot tub instead of an actual swimming pool, that is perfectly fine. I wouldn't fine mind some me. jets. <clears throat> some jets would be good. And Jim from Suburban Barbecue says to ice skate on the frozen pool. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I haven't seen... You know, YouTube videos where people are ice skating on a pool and then they fall in and someone has to call 911. That sounds like the kind of thing that would be on bloopers and practical jokes. 
in Peanuts, Snoopy ice skates on a frozen bird bath. Well, that kind of makes sense, considering his best friend is a bird. Yeah. Mm. Forgive me. Oh, my gosh. These things are very good. Okay, so we're starting to get to the point that the meat is all brown. You want to cook it until you can't see any more pink meat. And if you don't want to use breakfast sausage like we did, you can use a pound of any kind of sausage that you like. Or you could just use ground beef or ground turkey or ground pork. So you can change out what the protein is in this dish if you want to. As long as you can cook it in the pot. Right. It's all got to be able to be cooked in this pot in order to I mean, keep you know, it as a one pot dish. It has to be, but then it's not a one <laughs> pot meal. Woohoo! Okay, so how are we looking? Are we getting there? Getting there. A couple okay. more minutes, maybe. A couple more minutes, and then it's going to be time for the next ingredients. Okay, that sizzle. Love you. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, Sunset says we have to choose a swimming pool or a hot tub. I want both. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm demanding. <laughs> I want both. I want a cool pool and a hot pool. And I want them to be separate from each other. We used to watch this pool construction show. Yes, they did. These big backyard pool people. And there was a big pool. And there was always on one side was a little itty bitty hot tub part. It had jets and things in it for the adults. And I'll make you watch the kids swimming in the big pool. Of course, when you're a kid. No. But, but you know, the concept you know, is all the same. When, I want to move to Palm Springs, and in Palm Springs, almost every house has a pool, so it won't be a problem if I can talk this guy into going there. But if that doesn't work out, we may pick some other Southern, Southern California location because we like the idea of uh, being somewhere where the temperature is a bit warmer. Here in I San Francisco, it's warm, cold. Not cold. Yeah, it's cold here a lot, and we're tired of the fog after living here for decades and decades. Oh, but truthfully, this year has not been very fog. No, not so far. It has not been. So if the climate is changing, then we may not, you know, it may be warm in San Francisco. Well, Jim from Suburban Barbecue says pools are like boats. He'd rather have a friend that has one. <laughs> well, we actually, everything we've always heard about boats is that your two favorite days with your boat is the day you bought it and the day you sell it. I don't know. I've never had a boat. I'm, I'm not, I love going on boats, but yeah, I would totally agree when it comes to boats. I'd rather have a friend that has a boat and we'll just go on it occasionally. When we were putting up our pool in San Jose, before it was even up, we heard a knock on the door and there was some kid at the door with a towel and a swim trunks ready to swim in our pool. Like, yeah. It's not even up yet, Sonny. If you're the only person in your neighborhood with a pool, then you're going to be everyone in your neighborhood's best friend. That's one of the things I like about Palm Springs is everyone has a pool and everyone I know thinks their pool is better than everyone else's. So everyone stays home at their own pool, which is fine with me. <laughs> I want to have company, not from next door. I want to have our friends that come from out of town stay in our casita and you can swim in our pool. I mean, it's just, that, that sounds perfect to me. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're time to go on. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add all the seasonings. So I already pre-measured all the seasonings, and the measurements are down in the description mm -hmm. below well, while right watching now. this video. Mm -hmm. So Phil's just going to dump the salt and pepper and the other seasonings over the onions and the ground sausage. Steam. No worries. Let me take that off your hands. Okay, so now the next thing that's going to happen is Philip's going to give that a really thorough stir, so you want to get the spices and seasonings incorporated into the onions and the ground sausage. Ooh. Oh my God, that's not good now. Okay. Now, once that's stirred in, then the next ingredient that we're going to go for is our prepared broth. Okay. So, so we want to go ahead and we've got four cups of broth. You can use any kind of broth you want. What we did was we made our broth with the Better Than Bouillon product and mixed it into hot water. We have four cups of prepared broth. This will deglaze the pan as well as get our sauce started. So there we go. Woohoo! Awesome. That looks great. Let me take this sure, off your hands. No worries. Okay, so we've got the broth or stock. Now, who can tell me what the difference is between broth and stock? Oh, yeah, good one. That's It's, it's actually... Depending on who you ask, you're going to get a different answer. Because when I researched it on the internet, there was a bunch of different explanations. Let me try those too. There's also bouillon. Yes. Is bouillon broth or stock? Yeah. So or it's a bunch of stuff going on. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Homeowner says we need a pool for the hot days and fire up the hot tub at night. Well, that sounds like exactly what I have in mind, Rob. Yeah. I think that sounds like a great idea. Okay, let's see. Um, saunas are supposed to be awesome. Oh, uh, Leanne says infrared saunas. I don't think I've ever been in an infrared sauna. You mean like with lamps? I'm not sure what that is exactly. We'll have to look that up. Uh, Scent one, 1,000 says broth is made with meat or vegetables and stocks are made with bones. Oh. Okay, so that's one way to look at it. Okay. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. However, that doesn't explain the current trend of beef broth or bone broth. Okay, because bone broth is just... Well, then it should be bone stock. So then it should be bone stock. <laughs> okay, so I'm still not sure which is right and <laughs> which isn't. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Sunset says to name your next pet Vichy Swap. I don't know. Maybe if we have a fish, that might be a really yeah. good idea. I had two cats. One with Vichy. Won't be swap. There you go. I like that idea. Okay, Sunset. Here, Vichy. You here, just swap. figured out not only the name of our next cat, but the next two cats we get. Those are going to be. We like names. to have at least two. Well, yeah, we like to have at least two. We've had as many as six. And actually, I, I liked it when we had lots and lots of kitties. But we need a bigger house if we're going to do that again. That's always a special occasion. A special occasion. I rescued a bunch of cats from the backyard, Feral, and we. We took care of them for and 15 them years. And, uh, neutered them. We took. And, uh, yeah, we took. We yeah. did everything that needed to be done, yeah, we're good and we team. did our best. So, hey, I want to acknowledge Jess Hilbert is in the house. Okay. Hey, Jess, great to see you. And Ralph Jenkins has joined us in the chat. Hi, Ralph. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for playing so nicely in the chat room. One of the compliments that we most often get is that our chat is so much fun because everyone is nice. Because we have so many nice friends. We Hello. Do. We're so lucky to have so many nice friends, and everyone gets along, and you can learn about new channels. and. I see it looks like the quality of the video is starting to get really wonky. So we're going to do our best to keep on keeping on, regardless of how out of focus this video looks. So our apologies for that. If we could fix it, we definitely would. Uh, let's see. Oh, Rob from Mr. Homeowners wants to know if we're going to share our sausage pasta with our other housemates. Oh, of course. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> There's plenty. Oh, There's plenty amazing. of it. Yeah, okay, he's got to go off camera and get a Kleenex, so let me make sure this is doing good. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Can I get you something? Bless you. Bless you. I got uh, oregano on my nose. Oh, Philip got a little uh, too much oregano going on here. So, okay, so we're just going to stir this up. We've got okay. the... Uh, okay broth slash stock in there. And then the next ingredient that we want to add is the can of tomato puree. Mm -hmm. This is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes in puree. And as you can see, when Philip pours this in, hopefully you can see it. It's a really luxurious, thick, rich product. And we're going to be cooking it. You don't have to worry about it having that canned tomato flavor because we're going to cook this long enough that if there is a little tin taste to it, it's going to cook it all out and you won't know it all. And this is a very convenient, easy way to make this happen. If you prefer to use fresh tomatoes, you can do that. But I can't advise you on how many tomatoes it would take because that would depend on the size of the tomatoes and how juicy they are. Anyway, but a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes in puree is what we're using today. And this works really well. Did you see it turn a nice red color? It did. And <clears throat> I'll go back. Okay, so let me make sure I said hi to everyone. I think I have. If I missed you, just know we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining us. So now we've got the tomato, crushed tomatoes and puree in, and the next ingredient that we need to add is the tomato paste. We've got two tablespoons of tomato paste, and Philip's going to drop that in and then stir it in so it dissolves into the rest of the mix. And if you've missed any of the ingredients as I've said them, no worries because they're all listed in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can just copy and paste it right into your digital recipe book. Mm. This is a really easy recipe to put together. Mm. It's starting to smell really good in here. It's starting to smell really good and that looks really nice. So I hope you guys can see it. it actually, the color of the food is showing up the best of anything on the screen. <laughs> so you guys already know what we look like. So you know, next time we'll just point the camera right at the pan. Let's see. Uh, uh, Sunset is asking, why do some people prefer San Marzano canned tomatoes? 
It's a chefy thing. What's San Marzano? Well, it's a brand. Oh. Okay. And it's or a type of tomato. And it's really popular right now in the foodie community. It's kind of like the difference between, uh, you know, people used to use Tabasco and now everyone uses Sriracha all the time. It's one of those trends that comes and goes. And actually, they're delicious if you can find them. They are a little more expensive than regular canned tomatoes. But if your budget allows for it, then give them a try and see if you think they taste better. I couldn't tell any difference when we had San Marzino. San Marzano, San Marzano tomato sauce versus regular tomato sauce. <clears throat> uh, Scent One One Thousand says, personally, they think that bone broth is just a gimmick that refers to stock made from bones. And I think <laughs> you're right because when we see all the time in San Francisco, well, not not lately because all the restaurants have been closed because of COVID. But prior to that, there was you know like little sandwich board signs outside of restaurants, uh, noontime special bone broth. Bowl of bone broth today, only eighty-seven fifty. You know, because everything in San Francisco costs a fortune. Uh, but I'm so, to my nose. oh, sorry, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> bone broth is. I agree. It's one of those. It's a, it's kind. Of, it's a chefy thing that's currently in vogue, and everyone who thinks they're healthier than everyone else wants to have bone broth for lunch. Well, so it's fine with me. I'm not going to tell you not to eat it. No. And wasn't there a thing about bone marrow like a year? Well, bone marrow is also a thing. Uh, Jim from Suburban Barbecue says that <laughs> that San Marzano tomatoes are the members only jacket of canned tomatoes. <laughs> so it's one of those things that it was. And we know about that. Yeah, we know about members only jackets. <laughs> everybody had one and everybody wore one for about two minutes until they didn't. So, yeah, if you can remember, it, he must be close to our age range because members only jackets were popular in the mid 1980s when we were just getting out of college. So that that's 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 quite a while ago. We got a big throwback for that. <laughs> but that was hilarious. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, so now we've got the tomato paste in and let me check and see what's the next thing to do. Uh, the the cheeses are till and the we end. Voted. Okay, no we have not voted. It's time to vote. I wonder okay. if we got to jump glass on noodles. Yes, let's take a look. We've got Fusili number 34 and Cavatappi number 87 from DiCecco. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because it's getting too bubbly. Okay, so the next ingredient we want to add is the pasta. So, Cavatappi, Fusili. Which one do you guys want? And whichever one gets the most suggestions in the chat, that's the pasta that we're going to use. Just FYI, for this dish, you want to make sure you use a pasta that's really hearty. And by that, I mean something that's thick and can hold up to a lot of liquid. This is not a good dish for like uh, farfalle butterfly pasta because it's too thin. And also like angel hair pasta. No, oh, no. stringy <laughs> long pasta. That's not it. You want some short pasta and something that's kind of heavy. This would also work really nicely with penne or even mini penne. But you want a whole wagon wheel. You're going to use the whole, actually, you could use wagon wheels. That would also work. That's strong enough to hold up. So we've got a pound. We're going to use a pound of pasta. So it's either the Fusili or the Giacecco. Hopefully that didn't get on the camera. Uh, so we've got, uh, let's see, Ralph says Fusili. Bobby says Cavatappi. Sunset says Fusili. Uh, Fat Kids Barbecue says Cavatappi. So, so far we're tied. So, I mean, we could do half a box of one and half a box of the other. It like turns done. into a tie. Oh, wait. Fusili, Fusili, Fusili. Okay, let's see. Jess says Fusili. Lisa D says Fusili. Baking Diva says Fusili. Karen says Cavatappi, please. I also like Fiore, which is the flower-shaped pasta. Oh, yeah. Those little, they're, I, I'll have to, I, I pulled up a list of all different pastas earlier and we were looking at it. I'll show you that. It's actually really cute. I'm not sure if that's enough to hold up to this or not. Uh without breaking down because you know we leave the pasta and the sauce to cook for a little while so lisa d says flip a coin i would except <laughs> i don't have my purse i don't have any coins in the kitchen so i, I let's see i think so far let me go back and count uh in the chat you see me 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 five you see these and one two three kava toppings so so far oh wait no another kava topping so we're currently uh, four to five. Uh, Leanne is eating Jamelli. I'm not sure what shape Jamelli pasta mm. is. We're going to have to look that. We need to turn this down because that's a little bit too big. Too big, Yeah, just a teeny bit. So we just want a nice low 
simmer. We don't want to boil this dish. So uh, two world's medical doctors in the house. Hey, great to see you guys. I hope you guys are having a good night. They have sent us some very kind, thoughtful, and supportive messages over the last few weeks. And we really, really appreciate your support. Thank you for being here this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are. So uh, Sent1000 says, what about radiatory? I think he's being silly. Is the radiatory right I don't know, but it sounds good. We researched all these pastas this afternoon, and we just could not it's figure like, out I mean, look, what to do. You look like, you know, like this or something. Okay, so Radiant. now we flipped over, and now we have six votes for Kabatapi and five votes for Fusili. So we're going to have to put the pasta in. So let's just go ahead and go with the Kabatapi. Okay, Kabatapi it is. Now, just so you know, the pasta in the thumbnail that you saw for whole this box. live stream was actually working. Yeah, put the whole box oh, okay. in. You need a whole pound of pasta okay. for this dish. Exactly. Uh, Leanne says that smelly is a short, twisted pasta. And Jim says he thinks we're making these pasta names up. <laughs> Some <laughs> people might be. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to stir. Oh, here, go ahead. Sorry. Philip's going to stir the pasta into the sauce. And hopefully you can see this. Right now it's very, very liquidy. But as it cooks, the pasta is going to absorb a lot of the moisture, and it will not be liquidy at all once we're to the point that this is ready to eat. Okay, so we just want to stir that in. Okay. And then we're going to simmer it for a while. So let, boop, me, boop. let me get this timer set. We're using, just FYI, this is our Smartro digital timer. And I'm going to set this for 15 minutes and we'll check it. This will probably need more like 20 minutes, but we'll come back and check it. And so we've got a timer set for 15 minutes and now it's underway. So. During the 15 minutes, what we're going to do is... I'm going to check. Does it say anything? What does it say? About uh, it? Actually, the cover copy is less time than the fusilli. Okay. Well, that's interesting. We're going to check this. What The best way to check it is cook it for 15 minutes, take a piece of the pasta out, and taste it. And if it tastes done to you, then you're ready. If it doesn't taste done, let it go for a few more minutes. I don't mind al dente. But frankly, I'm a fan of overcooked pasta. <laughs> so if you like overcooked pasta, then you can just cook it as long as you want. So let me give you that. We can just put it off to the side. I want to clear a little bit of room on this back table so Philip can show us what he's got going on for the French bread that we're going to have. As we said earlier, Philip already baked French bread, which came from Pillsbury dough in a tube. You can use French bread from the grocery store, or if you have a bread machine or you love making bread, make your own bread from scratch. That'll work just fine. And then as you can see, Philip took the loaf of bread and then cut it into slices. These slices are a little, these are about five eighths of an inch thick, somewhere between one half and three quarter inches. And Philip just cut up the entire loaf into slices. And right now, He's behind me stirring up the garlic butter he made, and I want him to come up here and tell us what went into this garlic butter and how so to make that happen. It's about like that thickness right now. So I melted a half a stick of butter, half a cup of butter. I put in um, two loaves of the garlic press, which is about like maybe four cloves of garlic, and uh, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And about a tablespoon of fresh parsley from our herb garden. Hello. Yes, fresh parsley from the herb garden. And then um, it's set up a little bit, so it's cooled down, so it's, it's, it's a thick, nice, thick consistency, which makes it easy to spoon on and spread around. So we get the, uh, when it's too thin, it's hard to get the garlic bits, because, uh, uh, you know, it just turns into like thin butter. Right. The garlic just sinks the bottom. Now it's, the garlic's all in and through it, so we'll get garlic in every bite. Okay, well, Jim from Suburban is, is really super hot on your new garlic butter. And, oh, uh, Marcel from Little Fish in the Kitchen has to take off. I hope you have a great evening, Marcel. Hi, Marcel. Thank you so much for coming to check out our show this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And let's see. I think I said hi to everyone else. So we are still cooking, even though our picture is a little bit wonky tonight. So the pasta is just at, it's just a little – it's cooking at a simmer. It's a little bit bubbly. And uh, that's just what we're looking for. So now what we need to do is just get this pasta cooked. And that'll take a few more minutes. We're at uh, 12 minutes to go right now. And we'll see how it looks 
when the timer goes off. And if it's not done enough, we'll cook it for a few more minutes. So I'm preheating the June to 375 bake. And I'll slide these in when they're done and we'll bake them for at least 10 minutes. We'll get nice and crispy. So right now you're slathering on with a spoon yeah. the garlic herb butter that you made earlier this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. That looks really good. Yeah. I hope I, I hope I, I hope that's a little hard to see. We'll bring it up close. We'll bring it up close once it's all set up. Yeah. So four cloves. Uh, Jim says he wants four heads of garlic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I like where your mind's going. You can't. It, I I don't think you can have too much garlic. Mm. I, I think garlic is awesome. And, you know, yeah, I guess you probably could overdo it. But, you know, I've eaten, we used to go to this uh, popular restaurant and have cocktails and appetizers. And one of their most popular appetizers was a whole elephant head of garlic that they cut the top off and then roast it. And so you just stuck a knife in and pulled out one of the cloves and spread that on Cristini. It was so delicious. It's really, really super yummy. Uh... Oh, Jess was just at the uh, at the at the Fiesta factory. Jess, you went to the Fiesta factory. Oh my God, you lucky dog! <laughs> Color us jealous. Hello, it's all the way across. We're in California. The Fiesta factory is in West Virginia, so that is quite a long trip for us. But someday, before the end, we really want to get out that way so we can check out. Uh, all the stuff in the factory because not only do they have the pretty showroom where everything's retail, but they have the seconds room where those of you who've been there already know that you can get things at a significant discount. And often you can even find colors that have been discontinued for a while because apparently their factory is so big that sometimes things just get pushed to the side and we just forgot about the fact that we had all these flamingo pink plates over yeah. here in the corner. I mean, I don't know about you. We have a lot of Fiesta in our collection now, but I have not forgotten about any of it. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Last week I actually posted in a Facebook group that's a group specifically for people who collect Fiesta. And uh, they are, there's often lovely pictures of things people do with their dishes. Okay, so here we go. We're slathered. Um, the bread with the butter. There's so much butter here, it'll actually sink to the bread and go to the bottom and help uh, brown and crisp up the bottom as well as the top. And the garlic flavor will be all through the bread. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So. <laughs> okay, so we've got the garlic bread all buttered, and Philip's going to pop that into the oven. It's ready. It's almost up to okay. 10. This is cooking along nicely. We're, uh, we've got nine minutes more to go before we check to see how far along it is. And Ralph says we need to come to Pittsburgh so then we can all go to the Fiesta factory. We're going to have to, like, go to the East Coast because we know so many people. We know people from Maine to Florida, okay, and everywhere in between. So we're going to have to just start in Maine and drive all the way down, what is it, I-95 that goes down the East Coast? Is that what free, uh, that, the big freeway everyone always drives on? Anyway, we know people all over the place now thanks to our YouTube channel. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle says we always have a beautiful table set. I'm obsessed with setting the table, and I really like having a nice table, especially at breakfast, because sometimes, you know, especially on Monday morning, <laughs> breakfast when we get up at 6.30 in the morning is, you know, kind of, we're kind of, I'm bleary-eyed at that point. It's so happy, cheerful to see colorful plates, you know, mugs, dishes, whatever, on the tablecloth, and colorful tablecloths just, I mean, cause we, well, we love color. Yes, we do. And those of and, you who've been um, with us for a while already know and that. And it's just like, you sit down, oh, my God, the place is so good. Well, I'm like, you know, it's just, and then the food looks good on it. It's, it's just, it's uplifting. There we go, uplifting. I, I agree. And I actually have started setting the table the night before, so I don't have to worry about rushing, and I can fuss over it as much as I want. And then when we get up in the morning, the table is already set. And I cook breakfast. And I'm so spoiled. He cooks the hot breakfast every single day of the week and it is yummy okay let's see oh brayden estrella is here hey brayden thanks for coming to check out our feed this afternoon it's great to see you we're sorry we're coming to you and we're our picture quality is not what we would hope that it would be but we've done everything on our end that we can do to make it better so thanks for sticking there's a here a lot of us. people using the internet right now yeah <laughs> apparently that's the case there's a lot of people using so the we internet have to share band look how wonky this picture looks I don't think it's really gotten much clearer through the whole time we've been on. Oh, but 
tonight. You know, but... you can tell who we are. You can see our pretty shirts. Hello. Um, you can see the lovely food. Karen says, yes, Mitch, you are definitely spoiled. <laughs> yep, you're right. I am. I'm very spoiled. I couldn't get along without this guy. Let's see now. Uh, I want to make sure I checked in. Oh, okay. That's an interesting piece of feedback. What's that? Uh, Fat Kids has said he switched to his iPad, and now the picture is as clear as can be. That's very interesting. We're going to have to check that out. I know. I have it's not our end. I think it's the other end. I know. It's not our end. And yeah. we've done everything we can do. But what we're watching, when you watch, if those of you who've done live streams already know, mm -hmm. you can watch the live stream in the uh, live stream studio from YouTube. Or, and you can watch the live stream on the page where it's playing on your YouTube channel. And the results that you get are not the same at all, though usually... Either way, it's significantly clearer than this. So that's interesting feedback. I'll have to look on my phone later and see if uh, what we're broadcasting looks clear to people. Right. Children, we, we need to see if we had more other if we had other <laughs> devices, we could check out you know how clear the pictures yeah. are. So okay, we've got about five more minutes to go before we're going to be ready to taste that. And the French bread is in. It's no, it's in, not. No, it's not. not. The we're still, waiting. We're still yeah. waiting for the oven to come up to temp for that. So mm -hmm. in the meantime, I should have turned on earlier. Oh well, my oh well, bad. you know, my bad. But okay, you know, my so cocktail's here. almost. Gone. I know it's almost gone, and I'm going to have to make him another one. So that means we're going to get to show you how to make a blood orange margarita, and it is mm. so easy, and it's oh. quite yummy. Delicious. Here we go. We're ready. Oh, the temperature's up. Okay, so Philip's going to put the French bread in the oven with the herb garlic butter is already on it. And how long are we putting that in? At least 10, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're going to start at 10 minutes. It's on bake at 350, and we'll see after 10 minutes if it looks toasty and golden and the It'll be ready compound when butter is nicely it. melty, yeah. melty. This is starting to look really delicious. The sauce is thickening up. But I can tell that the pasta is still a little tough. The pasta is, well, we still got at least five more minutes yeah. to go. So we definitely want to get the pasta so it's. Which is interesting because the facility had a shorter cooking time than the, I mean, uh, the cavatappi. Yeah, on the box, the cavatappi has a shorter cooking time if you're just boiling it in water as opposed to the fusilli. Right. But uh, I'm not yeah. sure why, because this, this is actually pretty good. And the fusilli says. 9-11. Well, it seems to me like this would take, take longer because it's thicker. But, but, but I love Meaning the they, pasta. They actually get a lot bigger when they cook up. It was only like that big, and now they're like this big. Oh, interesting. What? Jess said she just went on her phone and it's crystal clear. Uh, Karen just went on her phone and she said it's crystal clear. So that's very interesting feedback to have. So I'm going to have to check this out on my phone, too. Um, yeah, that's, thank you so much, everyone, for the yeah. feedback about the different uh, formats that you're watching on. Because if you're looking like we are uh, using a Windows 10 system on a desktop tower, the, the uh, picture quality is dreadful. <laughs> now, I have heard other people say that different devices will do different things, and this is definitely one of those times. I would imagine that a, a smaller screen would make things look a little bit clearer, but it's not going to take away all of this. What would be interesting to try is to look at it on one of our tablets because yeah. that's a little bit bigger. So can I run over there oh. really quick? Okay. I hate leaving the live stream. I think it's rude. I think you should always stay in front of your camera, but I'm putting this gentleman in charge and I'm going to run right around behind our station and I'm going to get our tablet and we'll see what the results are of how the picture looks if we look at it here. We actually have these tablets. We use these big tablets now every morning. You may have seen them in some of our Instagram pictures of our tables because this is how we read the newspaper in the morning. Because here in San Francisco, a printed edition of the newspaper does no longer get delivered to people's homes. Except for Sunday. Only on Sunday. The rest of the week, you're on your own. So let's go over here. But, but they still, the Chronicle still, which is the newspaper we, we read here, this this newspaper it's, it's still they do a, an issue every day but it's all electronic except for sunday where, where you get still delivered as a paper and i'm addicted to reading while i eat and i love reading the news in the morning i'm gonna have to find our page first so that's <laughs> one thing i have to do here so i'm gonna try to look on our tablet here 
and see what things look like as far as the broadcast quality goes. Because as you know, it's not the same on every different device. So let's see what's going on here with this. Uh, 25 people are watching the one pot sausage pasta, very easy pasta dinner video right now. Thank you so much, all the 25 people watching the pasta dinner. Okay, well, on our tablet, it looks horrible. It looks pretty much like it looks, it looks like it looks on our other screen. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say horrible. Well, but you can tell what we're doing, but it, you can't really it, see any of the details. I watched the video one time where it was outside and the rain was falling and hitting the camera, and that kind of this is what this reminds me of. It's little drops of water on the camera. Yeah, like, wow. it's definitely not no. clear. So let's check. Now, I don't have an Apple phone. I have an Android phone. I rarely watch videos on my phone. So let's take a look and see what's going on with these videos. Uh, let's see. I'd have to find YouTube on my phone. Now I'm going to have to show off that, you know, I need an 11-year-old grandchild to show me how to use my phone. You just have a stuff to pull a thing. No, yeah, actually it is. It's stuff to pull. It came preloaded with a lot of stuff. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, here we go. One pot sausage. There, there's our video. came right up. So let's see how it's looking. Now, this is my Android phone. So let's see how the video looks. So far, it won't load. There we go. And actually, oh, look, it's crystal clear. Isn't that interesting? I don't know how to make the picture bigger. There we go. Yeah, okay. see, that's us. Look up. It's very, very clear on yeah, our phone. On, me... It's crystal clear. You can see just from this. Now, this actually looks better than it did earlier. So it's going in and out. Yeah, it's not, it's not really just a clear. smaller uh, resolution. It's smaller uh, screens have a higher sort of resolution because you know, this is this is definitely clearer than yeah yeah it's not right. it's not just that okay. okay so let me turn this off that is our timer so 15 minutes have gone by well, that's our timer so let's check and see how, thick how it's looking yeah it, this thickens up a lot that looks really good I think so it still need... has a little ways to go though so what we need is I have uh, tester spoons right here or fork whatever you would like so right now Philip's gonna give this a test and see where we're at with the pasta be careful because it's gonna be hot mm. Mm. is it there pretty good it's made me a tiny bit of a but I'm a pretty good yeah it's a chubby cost do you want to let it go for another couple more minutes or do you want to call that done um, yeah, because it'll, it'll set up. I mean, we need some cheese. Okay, well, we still have to put the cheese in. Yeah. But we have to take it off the heat yeah. in order right. to do that. Right. So you think this is where you want it to be? Um, I think so. Okay. We suck up pretty much all the moisture. Yeah, here. well, that, that looks pretty good. That yeah. looks pretty good. This You want the sauce to be, like, really super thick, and you don't want mm -hmm. this dish to be watery, so you want to keep cooking it until the pasta has absorbed as much water and, as it can. And the pasta keeps sort of cooking even after you take out the heat and even put in the refrigerator. Karen so. says she likes her pasta al dente. Rob yeah, says looks good. And Bacchus says he's going to make this dish in a smoker. Ooh. Smoke sausage pasta. Wow. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds so good. Okay, so the next thing that's going to happen is you saw Philip turned the stove off and moved the pan off the heat. Now we're going to add the shredded mozzarella oh, cheese. Diana. There's a cup mm, of mozzarella. Diana. Let me take that away. Thank you. Cream cheese. And we're going to dump in all the cream cheese. And now and we stir. stir, stir, stir. And Philip's just going to keep stirring and stirring and stirring until all the cheese melts and blends with the liquid from the tomato puree. And then we're going to get this really unctuous, luxurious, creamy, cheesy, saucy thing going on with the pasta. As you can see, it looks a little stringy right now. See? But keep stirring. Yeah. It's going to look stringy and gloppy and, and the cream cheese will look a little like cottage cheese for a bit. But yeah. It looks wonky yeah. when you're first doing it. It all blends in. It gets nice and smooth. Mm. Leanne from Sundays with Heart said she just put us up on her TV screen and it's like watching us on the movies. Hey, we <laughs> like being made as big as possible. If your TV is the size of your garage door, thumbs up from us. <laughs> Darnell is in the house. Hey, Darnell, thanks for joining us. Great to see you, Darnell. We're just getting our pasta dish ready here. 
Philip is stirring in the cheese. We have mozzarella, which was grated, and we have some cream cheese. And there are several of our friends in the house who do not like cream cheese, and we're okay with that. You can use mascarpone instead of cream cheese if you're not a cream cheese fan that'll melt really nicely and give you a lovely cheesy sauce effect with this and dish also it doesn't taste like cream cheese. it doesn't but that's okay it's 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 a nice you know creamy no, it's just, it just adds a, a, yeah it just yeah, adds this, this does you can't taste the actual cream cheese at all so if it's the tang of cream cheese that you're not crazy about if we didn't tell you there was cream cheese in this you probably wouldn't be able to taste it but i do not feed people things they do not like to eat so if rob was coming over for this i would use mascarpone instead of cream cheese just because i know what he likes oh he says specifically he likes it when he doesn't know it's in the recipe so <laughs> i'm sure Probably his wife has fed him a few things with cream cheese that he didn't know it was there. So let's see. We're done with the minute timer because we're ready to go with this. So I'm going to put the timer away. And uh, Janine says she's sitting at the beach and we're crystal clear and it sounds great. And she's definitely making this dish. Yay! Thank you, Janine. We really appreciate your feedback. I'm glad some people are able to watch things and that it looks clear. A uh, few couple of weekends ago, I did a special Sunday night live stream. And what are you looking for? A little plate. A little mama plate. They're over there. Uh, uh, and so I'm sorry. I'm not used to things moving around uh, when we do things. Yeah, well, sometimes things do. So, oh, yeah, this looks really good. Philip has stirred in all the cheese, and the cheese is melted, and it's blended with the tomato sauce that was in here. And this is looking mighty good. This is the look that we're looking for. Don't, uh, My garnish went on the floor. Well, I can fix you another one, boo. Okay, so what's going to happen now? We're just going to let this sit for a couple minutes. And ooh, the garlic bread no, is ready no, no. to come out the oven. No, no it needs more time. Okay, okay. it's not brown. That's enough. not ready anyway, so we're fine. Okay, that's fine. This just needs to sit for a little while. You want to let this sit and let everything just sort of meld together. Because this will stay warm for a really long time, especially if you put the lid back on it, which you can certainly do if you want to. Okay, so we're going to let the bread go a little longer. And guess what time it is? Time for another cocktail. So now I'm going to show you how to make the blood orange margarita. And this is actually very, very easy. Those are our garnishes. And what we need to do is we want, we're, you may have noticed that we're drinking out of hurricane style glasses today. You can serve your margaritas martini style if you like that better without ice cubes. You can serve it in a stepped coupe glass with ice cubes. You could use a tumbler. There's no really wrong glass for a margarita. We're just using the hurricanes because we thought they were festive. Right here. Okay, and, come uh, on. Hello. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a few ice cubes in this serving glass. Oops, that's a few too many. Oh, well, that'll work. There we go. Maybe one or two more. Okay, so I've got a few ice cubes in the hurricane glass. And then we're going to use, I gotta move over here a little bit because you're right in the middle of everything. Uh, we're gonna use the Brewmate cocktail shaker. This yes. is a lovely gift to us from Bobby Joe and Rob from the Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY channel. And this is a super cool unit. We love this cocktail shaker. So I'm going to fill the cocktail shaker about halfway full with ice cubes. There we go. We've got the cocktail shaker halfway full with ice cubes. And now it's time for some tequila. So I'm going to use this jigger to measure. And it's a one ounce cup on the top and a half an ounce cup on the bottom. So I'm going to measure four ounces. Uh, we're using Jose Cuervo silver tequila tonight. So let's measure this out. All right. Ooh, that's really good. <coughs> kind of like um, those vodka spaghetti sauces because they're creamy. Three. And it's just uh, it's creamy. Come on. Yeah, we'll have to make vodka. Vodka penne is a thing that people do a lot. So we've got four shots of silver tequila in here. And now I'm going to, or excuse me, four ounces of silver tequila. Now I'm going to add two ounces of triple sec. And you've seen us make margaritas a lot, so you may already know that triple sec is an orange flavor liqueur. This is a classic margarita recipe, and we're just tweaking it a little bit by adding some blood orange juice. So there's two ounces of the triple sec, 
And now I'm going to add one ounce of lime juice. Usually for a classic margarita, we add two ounces of lime juice. So what we're going to do is add one ounce of the lime juice, and then we're going to replace the second ounce of the lime juice with the blood orange juice. Now, you may be asking right about now, where does one procure blood orange juice? And just so you can see, this is what it is. It's a lovely, deep, I'd say purpley, burgundy, red color. And we got this by buying blood oranges at the grocery store and we squeezed them ourselves. One whole orange only yielded about two or three ounces of juice. So we're basically, we need one orange for every cocktail, which is kind of a little, a lot, but it makes for a really lovely juice. And we also dehydrated some uh, slices of the blood orange in the June oven. And that's what we're using for our garnish. See right here. We can see now the light. You can see right? that, yeah, it's almost like stained glass when yeah, citrus is dehydrated. Right. It has a really pretty look to it. So I'm going to use an ounce of the blood orange juice, and then that's it. So the next thing that we want to do is put the top shake, the, shake, shake. and the shake, lid shake, shake. on our shaker, and shake we're going to give this a vigorous shake. Now, usually right about now, I'd be saying to shake this until the shaker becomes cold. But these that roommate shakers are so well insulated, they don't get cold on the outside. So we're going to shake this for, I don't know, I usually like to sing the lyrics from RuPaul's peanut butter song. Peanut, 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 That should do it. I don't know how long did that take, like five or six seconds. It doesn't take very long to shake the cocktail. So the next thing that we're going to do is take this top off and then... We're going to pour the cocktail in the hurricane glass that's already filled with ice cubes. And voila, there we have it. Mm -hmm. Serve your cocktail. I have a little bit extra. So we're going to pour that off in a shot glass. This makes a little bit more than fits in a hurricane glass, so we're just going to pour the extra off. And we can sip on that whenever you're ready. Okay, so there you have it. That whenever is, I'm ready. Yeah, whenever you're <laughs> ready. That's the blood orange margarita. Okay, let's see. Oh, Karen has to go. Bye, Karen. Bye, Thanks Karen. for joining us. Bye, Leanne. Thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, a few people have to cut out, and thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, five o'clock. Well, thank you, Michelle. We appreciate it. We think that this food is looking mighty yummy as well. It's almost time to serve. So we will definitely be plating this up in the not too distant future. <laughs> and so tell us, Jess wants Jess is commenting that she thinks the blood orange sounds good. How does it taste? As you can see, it, it gives it this lovely sort of deep mo color, um, and the taste it's sweeter than a margarita and more orange flavor. Um, but the tequila comes out. Mm, my lime, it's just delicious. I haven't tasted and it. So great. I have Here. Taste. I'll just take a little sip. Mmm. That it's actually a really different okay. flavor profile. Yeah. Just that one ounce of the blood orange juice really changes how the classic margarita tastes. But it tastes really yummy. It's I think I agree with you. It's a it's a tiny bit sweeter. Is the orange juice is sweeter? And of course the color, that gorgeous yeah. purple. Mm -hmm is really hard to achieve but we're going to show you a way coming up uh probably later this week uh, we're going to use a product called blur which Ooh. is an extract from sweet pea flowers and it can turn cocktails blue purple or pink and as you know creating purple or pink cocktails is really challenging to do even if you're willing to use artificial food coloring because artificial food coloring when it's purple or pink just sort of turns orange when you mix it with clear liquids. It needs to be mixed with something opaque in order to see the actual color. So we're gonna use the Blur product and we'll show you how to make some purple cocktails that are supremely easy and supremely yummy. Thank you, Lisa D. We think everything's starting to look quite amazing as well. And Philip's got the bread going there. on. It's almost ready for the bread to come out of the oven. And then we're gonna give all of these lovely treats a taste. Karen says she's so hungry right now, and they have to eat dinner <laughs> late because they're going to look at houses oh. with big kitchens. Yay. 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 I hope you guys find a huge house that has tons of room and a knockdown gorgeous kitchen because Karen's food is always really, really spot on, and she deserves to have a big gourmet kitchen to cook it in. So I hope you guys find a really killer house.
that is the house of your dreams. And when you do, I want to know every detail because I love real estate. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I agree. The uh, cocktail actually is quite a gorgeous color. And like we said, getting these shades naturally is actually very difficult to do. And the blood orange is a really effective way of getting a lovely, deep, sort of purpley, burgundy color. I think that looks very, very festive. Um, Sunset says we can make blue rice. You're absolutely Ooh, right. You definitely yeah. can. Uh, the Blur product is um, basically pea flower extract, and you may have heard of that product. It's a popular tincture used in tea, and it's also great for cocktails and lots of other things, and it's a natural, there you go, I was going to say a natural food coloring. Anyway, so here is the toasty golden brown Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Yeah, let's look over here on the part where it shows the oh juice. Yeah, so yeah, it smells really, really good and it looks amazing. So you can just leave that right there. Yeah. yeah. That looks excellent. Perfect. Okay, so okay. Yeah. Mm. one pot sausage pasta. And you saw how easy that was. We had everything prepped. We pulled it together in just about an hour. It could probably actually go a lot faster if we didn't have to talk our way through doing this and you could have this dinner on the table in 45 minutes. So I think this looks amazing. And Philip's going to plate up some of this bread so we can show that to you. Uh, Ralph says, bread, the staff of life. Absolutely. Yes. We actually, like, we don't usually eat as much pasta and bread as we once did. But when we do, we like to make sure it's going to be as delicious as it possibly can be. When I first got a bread maker, I made bread, like, all the time. Every day. And, um, <laughs> oh, okay, bread. Wait. Mm. But, you know, bread. <laughs> All kinds of oh, bread. Anyway, so. La. So there is the compound herb and mm. garlic butter that was spread on the French bread and then toasted. That looks excellent. Okay, so. Now we need to plate up a bowl <laughs> of this pasta. So. I'm going to scoop some of this out. Can, we can use this. Yeah. But we could use a ladle. You want, I want a ladle? How about a ladle? Okay, yeah. so let's switch over to a ladle. Bing. And we're going to load some of this in a dish, and then Philip and I are going to taste it. Oh, my gosh. This looks so good. Ooh, this looks luxurious. I really like it. I, I love how this cavatappi looks. This is very different than the last time we made it with rotini. Okay, so we've got... A decent serving here in one of our pretty fiesta bowls, and Philip's going to garnish it with some freshly chopped freshly chopped parsley. parsley. How cool is that? Okay, well. that looks amazing. So what I want to do really quickly is ask you to hold this, and then I want to snap yeah. a picture of it okay. <laughs> with my phone, so we can Instagram it later. <laughs> in case you weren't able to see our broadcast in clear vision tonight, uh, we're going to put up pictures later. Mm on our Instagram so you can check out this dish for yourself. There, let me get this going on. Ooh, that looks so good. Okay, and let me get a quick picture. I want to get a quick picture of your lovely plate of French bread. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. There we go. Okay, I think I did it. So thank you for indulging me and taking a couple of pictures. All right, so it's going to be time to give this a taste. So. We've got forks right here. That's not forks. Oh, that's the fork you were using. Okay, so, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we present to you the one pot sausage pasta. Woo woo! Dinner is served. Yeah. Here we go. Let's have a taste of this. I can't wait to taste this cotton topic. I want to get some of that part with the herbs. Is it too hot? No. Mmm. 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 This is spot on. Oh, yeah, it's so creamy. I know. It's so creamy. The cheese just takes the sauce. You know, at first when you look at it and when it's time to put the cheese, I was like, okay, the sauce is too watery. But then once you mix the cheese in, excuse me, it gets all melty, melty and delicious. Oh my gosh, this looks good. I need another big fat bite of this. Mmm. Mm. Oh. This is mm. so good. Mm. This is what I call comfort food. Mm. And I love your approach. Let's just pile the pasta on top of Christini's. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Oh, Jill says she loves this bowl. I know. This is a Fiesta bowl from Fiesta Ware Table Company. And this square rimmed shape on the round vessel bowl is actually only available at Bed Bath and Beyond 
And my understanding is they were recently discontinued. So these babies are going to be really hard to find. So I bought all that I could afford before they ran out. So hopefully we'll be able to find more of these at some point in the future. Right now, these are very hard to come by, but oh, I just love this bowl too. I agree. Thank you, Jill. Jill's a big mm -hmm. fan. She has lots of, I just saw she has a, in one of her recent videos, she did a salad dressing and she used, a pa I believe the color was paprika. Uh, she may know the color for sure, but it looked like paprika to me. It was a paprika fiesta sauce boat and it had this gorgeous salad dressing that she made. Ooh. And of course, I think fiesta makes all the food look better. Let me try a piece of this bread. I need to get a little piece of this bread. So this is really super, the bread is really golden. I hope you guys can see that and you can see big, nice big chunks of garlic from your minced garlic in your yep. compound butter. This looks That's really why good. Spoon it on. And then um, the bottom is nice and toasty and uh, with the butter that sinks all the way through the bread. Mm, so it's, it's really like, good. This, oh, this bread is delicious. Super garlicky. Mm -hmm. Okay some of that parsley mm -hmm. going on and then it's super buttery and crunchy this is excellent mm -hmm. really supremely delicious thank you mr homeowner hey 27 people in the chat woo woo that's a good number for us we really appreciate that mm. yeah so jess, good. jess is jess knows yeah these are discontinued i was afraid of that uh so that's why we got as many as we could before they were all gone uh, we're gonna have to get a bigger house Let's see. Um, all right. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It did. It came out good. I did. Oh, a baby project is here. Hey, great to see you, baby. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And Badandi is here. Hey, Badandi. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's mm. always a pleasure to see you here. Thank you for being here. So what we've been doing for the last hour and 15 minutes is making dinner and actually uh, for those of you who haven't watched our show before, this setup where we filmed from across the stove is the first time we've ever done this particular configuration with the camera and our other equipment. This is the first time we've cooked a live stovetop dinner, and we've been on YouTube for six years, and we've been doing live streams for two years, and I thought it was long overdue for us to cook dinner mm. at the stove. Thank you so much for doing this. We, this is, is a recipe good. that we worked on together. And we've each made it uh, different times and you can change the pasta out to whatever kind of pasta suits you. I think it holds up really better for, you know, those uh, kind of sturdy pastas like cavatappi oh, or rotini or mm -hmm. farfalle or excuse me, not farfalle, but uh, fusilli is what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I know, I agree. Janine's always ready for margaritas. Janine, when we get to see you in person, when we come to SoCal, We'll make all the margaritas in mm. any flavor you want. Mm. Mm. Ralph says, Buon appetito. Absolutely. This tastes so good. I need to have another little taste of it. Mm. Super delicious, isn't it? I know this that pasta is, is so good. Mmm. <laughs> it's yummy. It's comforting. And as you saw, if you've been watching it, it the broadcast unfold, it's very easy. And there's only one pot. So the cleanup is we're going to transfer what we don't eat right away into a airtight plastic container and stash it in the refrigerator. This dish reheats very easily in the microwave. Just fill a bowl with it. Turn your microwave down to 50% power. Two of these size container. It'll fill up. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to be a lot. As you can see, this pot is pretty but full. Now, uh, but now we'll have, I can eat every day. Yeah, we'll have lunch and or dinner for the next few days without having to cook again unless we want to. So there you have it. One pot sausage pasta. You can change out the type of sausage. You can change out the type of pasta. You can even tweak the seasonings to suit your personal tastes. So all the ingredients, just so you know, are right down below in the description below where you're watching this live stream. And we did not put in the ingredients for how Philip made the French bread, because that was the last minute addition that Philip came up with a few hours before we went live. So I will go back once this broadcast is over I and add the ingredients. Well, I'm glad you did that. So we'll go, I'll go back in and update the description to include mm -hmm. the recipe for how to make the compound butter and how we did the French bread. So you can get the same result mm -hmm. if you'd like to try it for yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Rob says, from Mr. Homer, says he would have gone for a soup spoon instead of a fork. Well, <laughs> I actually had those right here in case either one of us decided we wanted one. So just because he mentioned that, I'm going to eat a spoonful of it. It actually it's pretty is, thick, though. So. Yeah, it's pretty thick, so using a fork isn't a problem. But with the spoon, you can get a lot more in one bite. Mmm. Mm. I'm using a spoon next time. Thank you, Rob. I could get three pieces of pasta instead of just one on my fork at a time. That worked out great. Love it. Okay, let's check in for the chat really quickly. Mona's here. Hey, Mona. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you coming to check out. We're just getting to the end of our dinner preparation. We've made a one pot sausage and pasta dish. Mm. <laughs> Philip made this lovely French bread earlier. And then you made compound butter with garlic, parsley, butter, garlic, and, what, garlic butter. and garlic powder. Yeah. We really amped up the garlic flavor. Hello, game. it's garlic bread. Hello. <laughs> Love garlic. Mm. Uh, and onions and. Oh, hey, and versatile Danny is here. Great oh, to hey. see you. Nice to have you here. We really appreciate you checking in. Thank you so much. We are getting to, let's see. Uh, we've got, we, yes, if uh, Bobby says, great dish for leftovers if there are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, in our house, there will be leftovers because even if everyone eats a big bowl of this tonight, we'll still have enough for at least a couple more dinners because this does make a lot. You could, if you want to, if you have a smaller family or you just cook for yourself, you could cut all the ingredients in half and just make half a batch and you could use a smaller pot. That's perfectly acceptable to do if you don't need all this pasta. Originally, we thought... When we made it, bless you. Uh, when we made it the first time, we thought, well, this is going to be really too much food for us because it's going to last forever. But then suddenly it was all gone and we were like, oh, the pasta's all gone already. So the truth is you can really never have too much pasta. <laughs> and, you know, it reheats well, so you can take it, you can put it in a, a plastic container with an airtight lid. And if you're still working, uh, rather than if you're still working on site instead of at home, you can take this to work with you. It reheats really easily in the microwave. Okay, I want to make sure I said hi to everyone. I think we have, and oh my gosh, we're doing so good here. So we really appreciate all of you guys joining us this afternoon. So we've made one pot sausage pasta. We mm. used the cavatappi pasta. You could use fusilli, rotini, Whatever you want. wagon wheel pasta. You could use probably even big shells if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. That would probably be good, too. Anyway, I kind of like the look of this particular pasta. I think this looks really cool. I always thought this was kind of a designery looking pasta, and I could never figure out exactly how. I know how they extrude it, but I couldn't figure out how they got it to curl into corkscrew shapes. So, you know, it must be the machine that does it. So, anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening. We really appreciate it. We've been eating pasta, eating French bread, and drinking Blood orange margaritas. Blood, blood. Cheers, everyone. Oh my gosh, these are so delicious. Mmm. Mm. And all this food got put together in about an hour. Yep. So that's about as much time as it would take us to drive across town and pick up takeout and bring it back. And instead, we have home cooked meal not only for tonight, but probably tomorrow night, the next night, and maybe even the night after that. So I think this is a great way to go. Uh, Mona wants to know how you did the bread. Let's go over the bread really quickly. First, um, you baked a loaf of French bread. The, uh, it's the Pillsbury. Uh, uh, pull it out. Where oh, it, right oh, there. Here we go. Okay, I don't. I know Mona doesn't live in the United States, so this is a uh, Pillsbury French bread. It's prepared dough that comes in the tube, as you can see. There's probably an equivalent product where they are. Well, I mean, you, also you could just use, you know, you could use a baguette. Okay. Yeah. You know, we just baked the bread ourselves, that we have. I mean, you know, you can buy a baguette at the store. You can use French bread from the bakery. But to make it like this, okay, I took half a stick of butter, half a cup of butter, um, four cloves of garlic, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of parsley. I'm just spread it on there and then baked it in the oven for about actually just about 18 minutes or 375 mm -hmm. to get this nice. Uh, it's it's really nice and golden. And the butter sinks all the way through to the bottom and makes this. It does. You yeah. can see where I bit out. The butter actually melts all the way down into the bread. So it's really luxurious. This tastes so good. Mmm. 
Mm, that was so heavy. Oh, Sid223 says, Kabatapi is cool because the ridges hold the sauce. Yeah. That's exactly one of the things bingo, I wanted bingo, to say. Bingo. Sid is right. You're absolutely right. That's what I like about Kabatapi is it's got those little ridges, and it really does hold the sauce very nicely. Plus, I think this shape like looks really cool when you serve it. Yeah. It's not a shape of pasta that you see a lot in restaurants, so a lot of people aren't really that familiar with it. And I think it looks really chefy, and it's not any harder to cook than any other type of pasta. So Mona says, thank you, Philip, for giving the explanation of the bread. Of course. Rob says, great show. Now I want pasta. Well, <laughs> Rob, if you were 3,000 miles away, you and your lovely wife would be at our dining room table right now. Oh, and you could have this, and we would be happy to feed you. So, okay, we really appreciate everyone hanging out with us this afternoon. This has been so much fun. Now, we've been... Um, actually got several other recipes for easy one pot and or you know 45 to 60 minute dinners and we're going to show you some more of those in the next few weeks uh coming up next tuesday you're going to show us how to make what parsley pesto because we've always parsley and i remember like when i went online and said well can you always parsley i saw recipes for parsley pesto so we tried it once and it was like Oh my, this is really good. It was really good. So we're going to do it again. And, you know, it's pesto. You can put on pasta. You can put on prosciutto. You can put anything you want. You could even use it as a salad dressing if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of ways you can use pesto in general. But this parsley pesto, it has a nice sort of grassy flavor to it in a good grassy way. Well, it's parsley. And, yeah. So it's, uh, and it's also, um, as you know, finding a large quantity of basil to make pesto is almost impossible because basil at the grocery store always looks horrible. Okay, okay. We, we've grown pat basil. And it looks gorgeous. I, it looked great. I cut it, I brought it in, and or I had touched the leaves, they were already turning brown. It's so sensitive. <laughs> so parsley is not that sensitive. So. Oh, okay. look how clear we got now. Now that we're done, the video is clear. <laughs> <laughs> All afternoon, it was pixelated and looking awful. Now, some of you were watching on your iPhones or your tablets. You got a really clear picture result. Some of you, like us, if you were watching on a desktop or an Android device, things weren't nearly as clear. So that's fun that it's cleared up a little bit. I really appreciate that. Uh, however that happened, thank you, Internet, for doing that. So let's see. Ralph says there's nothing I like more than a lovely bowl of pasta. Mm. Well, Ralph, you would love this because it, I think this is lovely if I do say so myself. And it looks very inviting and comforting and hearty. And mm. oh, let's have another bite of this. This mm. is so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. We're going to be eating another bowl full of this, that's for sure. Mona, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Mona's got Mona's saying goodnight. And we'll see you oh. next week for the Parsley Pesto episode. Me and her too. Uh, she wants to know, are you using curly parsley or flat parsley? Curly. Curly. You could do it with flat parsley, but we have curly parsley growing, and we have this huge amount of it. So Philip's going to put it to good use. And we've grown flat and curly, and curly comes up profusely big, lovely leaves. And a flat leaf parsley, nice, but it's not, as, it's not as robust. Yeah. Michelle's saying it's crystal clear on her system now. Oh, she can oh. see us perfectly where before it wasn't. Yeah, it's changed as we've been here. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. for some people, the video quality was awful while we were actually doing the cooking. It depends on the internet. You know. There's a lot of variables when you do live streams. You know, if you haven't ever done a live stream, mm -hmm. you probably don't need to know the gory details. But for those of you who do live stream, sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's not and 99 percent of the time it doesn't have anything to do with what you or we are doing as the broadcasters it has to do with internet connection uh, how fast your upload speed is how many other people in your house or even your neighborhood are accessing the internet right now so there's a lot of variables to change whether the picture is clear or not so hey a chef alexis is here Great to see you from the other side of the stove. He just got back from dinner. Okay. No, not mac and cheese. This is kabatapi and tomato sauce with some cheese thrown in. It was actually very easy to do. Sure. And there you go. Okay, now you can see Philip's cool splatter paint tank top. So let's see. Um, 
Brian Beestrom is here. Hey, great. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Brian says, before it looked like you guys were in the witness protection program. <laughs> yeah, we blurred out our faces so no one can figure out who we really are. I know nothing. Nothing. I know nothing. We say nothing. We see nothing. We hear nothing. But here you go. No. There you go. So, oh, thank you, Alexis. He's commenting about our shirts are cool. We agree. We love buying cool shirts and wearing cool outfits. And sometimes we match. And this is great. We're working the kitchen because whoa. Yeah, if there was a splatter on it, you probably would not even know it. <laughs> okay, Pete. So, time to go. Time to go. We're gonna go and have some dinner now. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are in the country. So. The ingredients for mm -hmm. the one pot sausage pasta are right below in the description, mm -hmm. as are the ingredients for the lovely and very tasty uh, blood orange cocktail. We will also add the ingredients for the compound butter that Philip used on the toasted French bread. So you can make this as well. It's very easy to put together. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fix another bowl of pasta and we're going to go sit in the living room behind watch the some cameras. We're going to watch some other YouTube sit shows. Down. And sit down because we've been standing up for hours and hours. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone, for being here. We really appreciate you guys. Brian, Jess, Sid, Rob, Alexis, Michelle. You guys are great. Uh, everyone, I know. Really, Jimmy, really, really, thank you. I want to make sure I try to say hi to everyone. Mona, Ralph, Demi, Danny, Lisa D, Bobby. Oh my gosh, I want to go up here and make sure I said hi. So if I didn't mention your name specifically, just know that we really appreciate you. Please come back. <laughs> and please come back next week and hang out with us. We may have an interim episode between now and next Tuesday. We'll see how it goes, but we'll let you know when that's going to happen. So look for our Instagram feed. We will definitely tell you what's coming up here. And thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. Jess, thank you so much for joining us. Alexis, Mona, Rob, and Mr. Homeowner. Thank you so much. He's Mr. Homeowner is very generous with his time and helps moderate our chats, as do a few of our other friends. But tonight, it looked like the moderation duties fell primarily to him. So, Rob, props to you for helping us out. We really appreciate it. And uh, Rob, in case you don't know, recently took over as the host of the Hot Seat Show. Oh, yeah, right. And so every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, Rob is now hosting the Hot Seat Show, and you'll see a lot of cool guests on that show, as well as his co-host that many of you know, and also Keith from Keith Betag Channel makes cameo appearances on that show regularly and always has things that are interesting things to Ooh, say. Like Keith. So that's a great show. Thank you so much, Mr. Homeowner, for joining us. So, Peeps, we're going to have to call in tonight. Yeah, gotta go. We're going to go sit down. i got to get this guy another drink. So we're going to go have some of the sausage pasta and French bread and a cocktail while we watch some of your YouTube videos on our big screen TV in the living room. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you all here. And we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you again. We really appreciate it. So three, two, one. We're out of here, Pete. Ciao, Bella. See you next time.